Hello, everybody out there. How are you all doing? Pretty good so far. <laughs> good Friday. All right. Happy day, everybody. Um, we're getting the live stream going right now. We have uh, dozens of people watching on both YouTube and on Facebook. Um, if you have a comment, please comment in the comment section. And if you have a question, and we're gonna we're gonna try to answer all of those. Um, welcome to the live stream. I'm gonna throw it to Kelly and Dave to take it from there. Hey guys, welcome to our live stream. This is um, really really exciting for me to be able to ask questions that I know are on my mind as well as a lot of your minds. Um, I'm going to introduce myself really quick and then hand it over to Dave. Um, my name is Kelly Bailey and I am currently an MFA student at Savannah College of Art and Design for themed entertainment design. And um, before that, for 12 years, I was a teacher in public schools here in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm currently an intern at Universal Creative and um, working from home remotely as as we all are and I'm still going to school full time. So I got a lot of stuff on my mind as as I enter this industry and I'm sure that many of you do as well. All right, yeah. <laughs> Wait, there we go. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Dave. Um I am a I, I graduated from the University of Illinois a couple of years ago, so I'm a few years out. Um, uh, in mechanical engineering. And then about a year ago, I moved to Orlando and really joined the theme entertainment community. Um, and during that, I've kind of developed a, an interest and a passion in helping people get into the industry and make their way through the industry. So I developed a few different um, tools to help people do that. Um, one of which is a job board called themeentertainmentjobs.com. The other is a, uh, a group called Edge. Uh, entertainment design group events that is a, a part of the slice uh, networking um, group and uh, that's just mainly for you know networking in in the industry going and doing fun group things around Orlando um, and currently for work I was just recently laid off from a uh, audio design and engineering firm here in Orlando that does theme entertainment and cruise ships because of this whole uh, COVID-19 situation so um, I'm hoping to, to help you guys with my experience and I'm kind of in a similar boat. So I'd like, I'm, I'm really interested in, um, thank you, Patrick and Kelly for letting me join in. <laughs> Absolutely. So before I go into my, my thing, we do have a question from YouTube. Will this be available as a normal video after the live session is over? And yeah, we are recording and we're going to probably even cut it up into, uh, to bite size segments and, um, we'll release it on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, wherever we can upload it. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little about myself. I'm going to tell you about who I am and then I'm going to tell you about how I got to where I am, uh, today. So, you know, what, you know, why, why am I even here? Why am I here? Why would you listen to me? This goofy guy has like a weird bo beard going on that he can't even really grow out. Um, <laughs> so I, my name is Patrick Kling. Uh, at the moment, I am an art director for Nickelodeon Experience Design, uh, and that's I, I, I just opened up an amusement park in uh, New Jersey called the Nickelodeon Universe. Um, it has uh, t over 20 attractions um, with the Nickelodeon brand, um, and I've been in the industry for six, seven years, a little bit more, depends on how you want to bridge that. And I, uh, much like many of you uh, watching, uh, I presume, you know, grew up uh, playing Legos and Connects when I was five years old and just knew I wanted to do theme park design. I actually uh, grew up down the street from Disneyland in Orange County, California, and I, I was just fascinated by it. I grew up uh, in the 90s and would watch the, uh, the, vault, the, the Disney Channel's Vault uh, series. And so at nighttime, they would switch over and play old Disneyland uh, Walt Disney Presents shows. And I caught my first glimpse of Imagineering um, with this classic episode where they went behind the scenes on building Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion. And I just knew that this is what I wanted to do growing up. So um, growing up in the 90s, the internet was just kind of a thing. Um, it was hard to find information out there. I remember, um, this is a bit of a deep cut, but Rocket Rods was being built. And somebody had taken like a bootleg video of that and put it on some sort of deep, not dark web, but just some weird website. And I saw it testing and thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I was completely fascinated by it and went into high school. 
And uh, everyone thought I was a crazy person. Uh, I'm sure people who I went to high school might be watching right now. And uh, I was just obsessed with theme parks. I created the first theme park club. Um, I was spending my time in the library looking at sites like West Coaster and Mouse Planet and Mice Age and Mice Chat uh, all, and Jim Hill Media and was just completely enamored with anything I can get my, my hands on. And I would go to the uh, professor um, or, you know, the, your, your guidance counselor. And I kept saying, I want to do theme park rides. And uh, nobody knew what that meant or how to even do that at that time uh, because uh, it was just such this a really, uh, really weird thing. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out, okay, how do I, what do I go to school for? Didn't have any idea what to do, but interior architecture sounded good. So I went to school in, for interior architecture um, and an Imagineer came to my school that I was at and said, you know, if you want to become an Imagineer, you need to go to the parks. So uh, I, while I was working, um, and well, actually while I was living in uh, Burbank, I was making the commute from school all the way down to uh, Disneyland to work in Tomorrowland Attractions. Uh, so I worked in Tomorrowland Attractions for many years. Uh, eventually I actually changed my major to be uh, international business. There's a lot of reasons why I did that, but I'll just kind of keep it brief. Uh, and, and then I'm feeling excited. I'm working at Disneyland. Everything's going great. I'm about to graduate. And then the entire economy collapsed uh, in the year 2009. Um, and that's, that's what I was facing when I was graduating. Um, and we have a lot of follow-up questions and questions that are going to come from our, our host. But that's my background um, leading up to college. Um, so we can get we can well, maybe we could start there, guys, and and just if you want to start asking questions, um, let's just see what you got, and then I can kind of keep unfolding my story of how I got to where I am today, as I as I think that'll you know make sense as we go along. Dave, I'll, I'll go ahead. No, go, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so so we I was kind of polling all of my friends and and classmates and people that are interning with me at Universal to find out like. Besides the questions I have, like what are some of the questions they have? And we, we kind of compiled a little bit of a list, but there's also awesome questions coming in in the comments right now. So one of the first questions is, what are the differences that you see right now between the Great Recession of like 08, 09, and now this, the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah. So this is a, extremely different um, than what happened in, in, in the 2009 recession. So one thing to keep in mind is the demand for, pardon me, I'm just doing some live stream stuff. So we mute them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 2009 collapse happened for very complicated reasons. Um, um, the, the, the more, the subprime mortgage, mortgage, comp, um, mortgage crisis, um, oil, the lack of oil demand and all these things that were combined with that, um, and why that affects us is that there were a lot of projects around the world that were all based on oil being tied to it being worth $140 a barrel. So the, the, the Middle East was invested in, in all these projects that were trying to make themselves be the Walt, the Walt Disney World of Middle East and Europe. And all those projects started to get canceled. And that was a bit ahead of 2009. So all these all these people had staffed up and were doing full blown ahead with all these parks all these projects and they come all of them completely got most of them got shut down and got grounded to a halt um so that was a economical issue with regulation um with oil just mad uh, speculation i know i've kind of butchered the real reasons of it but it was very, it was economic basis um it was a ca not capitalist it was just like deregulation that caused that and this one is completely different. So this is not a supply or demand situation. This is a government is telling us that you cannot operate uh, mm -hmm. your business and that people cannot go to your place of work and buy your products. And it's affecting everybody all at the same time. This isn't something where hospitality and, uh, and, and, was, and travel was hit first. This is everyone all at once is being hit. And so what's, what is a, ups, uh, a good thing about that is that since this is so rapid, the government has already intervened to help those that are watching that might have been laid off, furloughed. Um, we, just, we all just got the news last night, Disney's furloughing most of their staff 
you know, April 19th. Um, so with the Great Recession, there was no, there were not as many protections in place. Um, and that, this isn't a political thing, but just the stimulus package they had during that time was seven hundred billion dollars around that, give or take, for the TARP funds. We're already into the trillions of support that's having to come out because of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it's it's totally different, which means if you're an optimist, you think, okay, things are going to bounce back quickly. So yeah, there's going to be a general thing of, okay, we learned that we can be efficient. There might be a slow ramping up, but people are going to want to go out there and they're going to want to, uh, to go to Disney World. They're going to want to go to Disney World in three years when all these projects that are Disney is working on are going to have to come back online. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you and say that every single project that is in the pipeline right now is going to get made. I think that there will be a trimming of uh, back, but I think that we're going to go return back to a, a you know, a, a stasis point. It might be slow to get back there, but it's not like when I graduated where there was no, <laughs> there, was, there was really no hope. And, and while the, the similarities that um, uh, going into my story just a little bit was, I had graduated and I knew I needed to get involved um, with theme park design. And so the steps that I did is I, I got involved with the TEA. So Themed Entertainment Association, um, if you don't know what that is, uh, find it right now. I actually, moments ago, was on a board of uh, Eastern Board of Directors call for them. And um, they're huge in getting connected into the industry. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are already in Next Gen who are watching right now. Um, and I got involved when there was no next gen. Somebody said, hey, you're like the first next gen person. And I was like, okay, that there's no program yet, but yeah, I'll be that that guy. Uh, and I volunteered with the 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 TEA's Theo Awards. So um, those are the Oscars, and hopefully you guys are, are have a familiar with the theme entertainment industry, so I don't want to get too in the weeds on explaining that. Um, but I volunteered with that. So I actually got uh, uh, applied to a job um, and I thought it was a job and it turned out it was more of a volunteer industry. I hadn't really even heard of the TEA. And so I worked with uh, Lenny Larson, who's still involved with the TEA. And he said, we're producing this, this, this show, the Theo Awards that used to be in uh, at Disneyland. And now it's at Universal Studios Hollywood in this big black box space. So they didn't have a stage. They didn't have a uh, rigging. They didn't have, uh, they didn't have iMag and all these things Disney had done for them. So we had to completely produce the show and I was volunteering amongst all sorts of professionals who had their own firms that were recently laid off, to be frank, and were looking for work and just trying to stay connected. Um, and while I did all that, I, as a creative coordinator, uh, which was really fun, is I, I worked with like Richard Sherman and was like helping out with all these people that I, I was geeking out over who were part of the, sh the presentation. Um, and I kept up really well with them. Um, and immediately after, what happened is I would say, hey, like, I'd love to talk to you. And I'd go out to lunch with all these people from all these different companies. And they said, you are a great dynamic guy, but we just laid off half of our staff and our big project just got canceled. Um, so we don't really, we can't really help you. Um, but it was a lot of, you know, attaboy, keep at it. You're doing the right, doing the right things. Um, and that's what I did is I, I just kept volunteering, kept in touch with all these people. Um, I, um, from any company you can imagine, Universal, Disney, Thinkwell, uh, BRC, uh, all these people were so kind and they met me and they talked to me. It was just, uh, we, we completely just laid off, <laughs> laid off our, our staff. Um, so so, about that so <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's definitely challenging. Um, but so for our current situation, yeah. where would you recommend people look at, to volunteer? Cause you say, you know, volunteer at these places, but what's the first step? How do you start that down that path? So let's just go ahead and close our eyes and pretend that the, the wheels, things are open. We're okay to go back into public and places are slowly coming back online. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, a, a, it's really the same types of advice I would give people if they if they we were in the best economy in the world which is getting involved in uh volunteer programs like give kids the world they always need help um getting involved with uh people um local theater productions doing your own art um depending on what your field of expertise is um there there are a lot of organizations out there that you can get involved with um professionally so it's not si signing up for a shift and and washing a window it's saying hey professionally like i have some time i'd like to dedicate to you 
Is there a project I can take on? And getting to know this organization quite a, a bit and say, I see this need that you might have. I want to donate the next four weeks to just do this for you guys and really commit to it. Um, one problem with, with, with volunteers that you'll see is that people will say that they can, they'll be willing to do a lot of stuff and they don't follow through. So they really need that follow through from, from you if you guys uh, volunteer for them. Uh, but uh, that is my, my advice is to stay active um, in volunteering. And the TEA, the Theme Entertainment Association and Slice Creative Network, they're always looking for people to help out with events. Um, shoot me an email, follow me on LinkedIn. I'll help you get involved. Um, my name, my name's not easy to find or not hard to find. It's Patrick Kling. You found us already. So you should know who I am, or you at least can fi find out who I am, LinkedIn me. And, um, we're going to need people to help out, especially right now. Everyone's just kind of stopped. So, you know, if I were to say today, like, what can I do to volunteer right now? We're just, ugh, we're just kind of in the crisis mode and everyone's kind of freaking out. So it's really the long game. Uh, Jimmy, I'll leave it back to you. Well, that actually brings up a question. Like, what is one thing that we can do now? Like, in your in your opinion, obviously, everybody's situation is going to be different. But what's something right now that we can do to kind of prepare? Yeah, I uh, prepare for getting back into the job market is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, it's the it's the volunteering. Um, it is trying to stay connected with people. Um, I think that the the best way of doing that is to interact with people around you. So let's just say you're a student and you're watching. It's interacting with the students that you know may have already got into the industry. Like the two people, you, Dave, I know you're out of school, Dave, and Kelly, you're about to graduate. But you have people that might be ending their internships or maybe they just got laid off and they're more than willing to uh, come to the table with uh, with a project. Hey, I have an idea for this. Why don't I go to Give Kids the World and say, I'm going to do an interactive scavenger hunt for you guys. Um, I've tried to do this in the past, but it didn't work out. But do that. And if, you, if you're five students and you say, we want to turn key this for you, then, then that's a very helpful. And, it, and nothing's more powerful than having a living, breathing project that you work on that people know. Everybody knows to Give Kids the World. And I don't want to harp on Give Kids the World because that's only in Florida, but it just happens to be a... Um, and that only happens to be the thing that comes straight to mind. But if you're watching in California or you're watching around the world, uh, there's got to be a local organization that could use your help. Getting a tangible, real, real project is important. Why it is, and even if you're volunteering, because guys, the days of I'm going to go walk in as an intern and get paid or I'm going to get paid for free. Oh, sweet. It, it's just not really a thing in this economy. It's, it's All these are the people that have more experience are going to get that. But you can go to an organization and say, um, hey, I want to do a project for you. What do you need? And why that's so important is that if you're if you're not just in sandbox mode, you're actually getting real world requirements. Uh, you will have people to answer to that have opinions. You will have, and you guys both know this more than I, as much as I do. You'll have requirements. You'll have budgetary restrictions. If you even have a budget at all, and you're having to work start working in the corporate world, which is it's a lot different. Um, I'm not sure what the latest schooling is like, but somebody coming in at the last second and saying this idea is trash you need to rework everything every every other time you have a meeting that's good experience that you can have i don't know what they're doing at yeah. Yeah. no okay. like, it happens <laughs> sometimes so i mean it, it happens in um the real world it happens in school it happens in your, in your life like where you're you're trying to make decisions on where to move to for work and all of a sudden like whoop work's not there. I guess I'm going to be, you know, move back. it's, it's about being able to think on your feet and be innovative. I think, I mean, I could, I could be off base there. Um, but you know, yeah. going, going back to the question, like one of the things that I've been trying to do during this time, because I'm not, I'm not currently working. I have been trying to stay connected with people, but I've also been reaching out to some of those people that I've been meaning to talk to, um, you know, in the industry, the in and around the industry that I've kind of had some interactions with either I met them once or twice at a TEA event, or they're really active on LinkedIn. One of the things that um, I've been trying to do more is, you know, people, there are a lot of people in the industry who post regularly their projects or, you know, personal projects that are in the industry. And it's a good way to reach out and say, hey, I saw this cool post that you did. I'd love to, I'd love to learn to get to more, learn to get to know your work and what you do more. Um, you know, if you are going to be reaching out to people on LinkedIn, I would recommend that you never go into it from a point of like, give me a job. 
they will they won't <laughs> they don't want to help you if you're if you're looking to be selfish out of it then everyone will see that and you you won't get very far with people you really have to approach it from like you know and it's a good it's a good thing to do now is to get to know other people in the industry um, because it is a very small industry and that's how most of your opportunities are going to come about yeah um, so I'll I'll move on with my story a little bit and then you can see the hard knocks that I had to do so I <laughs> thank you I volunteered with the TEA and I was working at Disneyland at the time and uh, I was faced with the having real even though I had friends that were doing theme park design I just had no opportunities in about 2010 getting in there as a coordinator as a as a virtually anything um, at least uh, maybe that was somehow my fault I don't know I was trying to do all the right things but there was just no opportunity for me and so I was faced with a decision I was actually working in uh, pro uh, I was working as a project tester for workforce management at Disneyland so like a semi professional job on a project um, and I was faced with going back to work at Space Mountain um, Woo, Space Mountain's great uh, and which was really fun however I had like learned everything that I I could learn in my opinion working at Disneyland. So the Imagineer had said you got to go work at Disneyland, and the reason why he said that was you need to just learn. You need to learn how rides, how the guests function, um, different ride systems, and how they all interact. Pardon me, I just kind of burped. Um, and and it's and it's very important. Um, and I'm going to recommend that to all of you guys. So. You might be graduating very shortly from now or maybe in a year or, whatever, or five months, whatever it may be, and you haven't landed that internship or you have the internship, but there's no opportunity out you yet because they, they're they staffing up with all these other people. My recommendation to you is to get a job, move, move to LA or Orlando and get a job doing themed entertainment on a related field, which means that could be working at Disney World, that could be working at Disneyland, that could be working at Universal Studios, working at your local amusement park. Um, there's no, no shame in doing that. Uh, there is tons of things that you're gonna learn um, by doing those jobs. Working at a local theater house um, is good, but you may have already done that already. Like you may have done theater at school, but you can't learn, you can't operate attractions at school. So um, I would, for all those watching that may not get the jobs right out of the gate, go into a theme park, start working there, move to Orlando, move to uh, Los Angeles and start learning. Um, I, I, that's my, my number one recommendation for those that might not face the job. And that's true today. It was true a year from now when I was looking and talking to next gen students who have similar situations. Um, it's just the way to, to go. Um, so back to my Disneyland story. Uh, I was faced going back to Space Mountain, felt that I had learned everything I can. And I just felt like it was time for a big a move. Um, personally, professionally, and I just I just packed all my stuff up in a storage unit, and I was fortunate enough I had some money saved up um, that I went and backpacked Europe for six weeks. Now that's very privileged, and I know that's not obtainable for all you people out there watching, but I saw people on budgets that ranged from two dollars a day to three dollars a day to four dollars a day, all walks of life that were doing that, and that was an incredible experience. So I took that opportunity of like, all right, I haven't started my career yet. I don't have any opportunity. I'm gonna go and just explore the world. Um, travel is 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 great, um, and the rest of the world does that. United States doesn't um, because we kind of have this capitalist like it's very important to go right from this right to there. But if you're faced with you have money saved up, you're fortunate enough to have you know whatever you made to have to do that. Uh, 100% would recommend that. Um, I came back and I had an idea for a company. The company failed miserably, unfortunately. Uh, but I did try something new and I, I, I made my own job for a little bit. Um, it was, a, it was a really fun experience. Um, about a year had gone by and I was faced with what do I want to do next? I personally had been in LA, Orange County my entire life and I had spent a little bit of time in Orlando and I had friends in Orlando. And so I decided to pick everything up and move to Orlando. <laughs> so and I'm glad I did. I met my wife in Orlando, which is fantastic. And, um, um, and I, I did the same thing that I would recommend people do now is I, I got involved with it. I went to a TEA event. I just talked to everybody I could. And then the per somebody I had matched up with uh, posted about Slice Creative Network, which was actually the next um, event that was happening in like a week. I had no mm -hmm. idea what kind of the jobs existed. So I wrote down that I could do basically everything and came in and just said, this is who I am. This is, this is what I'm all about. And um, 
this is why I'm going to go to another point that you guys can probably ask more questions about, but the long game is so important because at that speed networking event I'd went to from slice, I knew Brian Morrow from the TEA event, like 10 years prior or five years, whatever it was. And I was like, Hey, you kind of maybe remember me. Maybe you don't. He's like, yeah, I kind of remember you because he presented there. Um, and, and I ended up working with him a little bit later on in life, but, um, it's all about the long game guys. So that was a span of two, this, you might be really demoralized to hear this, but it was a span of years where I was, I was like ready to go back in and try to get a job, um, in theme park design, but I did. Here I am. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, my, my story is very similar. A year ago it was like, I moved to Orlando, got the first job I could get and went to a TEA event and then you know, through networking and within three months had a job in the industry. And I got very lucky to have that, but it is a long game. Um, actually, one of the questions that we had in the, in the live stream or in the, the live chat here that uh, kind of was pertaining to what you were talking about. Um, what, is it better to um, get a job that is related to what you want to do that is outside of the industry or to get a job that's in the industry that isn't exactly what you'd want to do? That's a tough one. Yeah. Um, I would I would say it, it's very specific about what you are what your your path is. So mm -hmm. if if you wanted to be an artist, for example, I wouldn't recommend you going into a project manager job. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it was in theme park, and that's that's a challenge. Like it'd be hard to make that leap. Um, mm -hmm. So that's almost a coin flip. <laughs> I, I wish I could. I was better than that. Um, yeah. I, actually, yeah, go ahead. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, I actually was in the situation. Um, yeah. So I started when I moved, when I first moved to Florida, I got the first job that I could get that would move me down here. And it was in, uh, it was in an in industry that I had some experience already in. Um, and then part of my process of, you know, reaching out to people and applying to jobs actually got me into, into the theme park industry in a similar role to what I was doing when I moved down here. Um, but it was, you know, uh, in Cocoa, it was near in Cocoa Beach, and it was doing the same kind of thing that I had been doing, which I wasn't extremely interested in doing. Um, so I actually, you know, knew that if I had taken that position, that I would still be, you know, networking and reaching out and telling everybody else that I was, you know, looking for something else to do, um, which can be a very sticky situation because it is such a small industry. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing is it, there's a lot of parameters around that. If I was mm -hmm. living in um, Sioux city, Iowa or Idaho, mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever one it is, Sioux, um, Sioux Falls, Iowa, Sioux Falls, Iowa. There you go. <laughs> they said, Hey, you can design, you can be do theme park design or theme park related job in Sioux city, or you can go down to uh, Sioux Falls or go down to Orlando and mm -hmm. work in a related field or Los Angeles, I would say take the job that's going to pay to get you out of where you are to go where the action is. Um, yep. That's I think is the my, the primary thing. Um, I do come across people um, who who's, who are not in Orlando or not in Los Angeles, and they 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 want to be in theme park design. Um, and there's a couple exceptions out there. New York can kind of work. there's places that can kind of work, um, but I, I just flat out um, will say you got to get to Orlando. Like, and if and if you're not willing to do that, then you're not taking your career seriously enough. You don't go to make movies in Sioux City, Iowa. You go to Hollywood, right? Everyone yeah. knows that. <laughs> and yep. now you go to Vancouver, maybe you go, to, but you go to Hollywood because that's where it is. Why, why that is so important is you need to be surrounded by people that are living and breathing it. All my friends here. All do my primarily amount of friends do theme park design, um, or are related to theme parks, supporting theme parks in some way. And if you go to Hollywood, it's the exact same thing. Everyone is there because they want to do Hollywood. Most of the time, it's entertainment based. You're going to a coffee shop, and there's people that are just writing treatments, they're writing storylines, they're screenplays, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's so important to get to Orlando um, or Los Angeles. I always I say Orlando because I live here, but um, I think that's very important. Um, so why don't we go to um, if you guys have another guy, maybe a follow up for me, and then I'll pull up another question from the audience. Go ahead, yeah. go. <laughs> uh, yes, we will have this as available as a normal video. 
for the new people I watched. Um, so talking about moving, like I even live in Jacksonville. Like that's that's where my home is. And from art school, my my first my bachelor's degree is in arts in um, so moving from that to teaching was fine. I was still kind of applying for jobs and internships at Disney, even though Orlando was only two and a half hours away, it still wasn't enough. I went back and got a second bachelor's degree so I could apply for internships as well as like get some knowledge while I was doing it. Still nothing. I went to SCAD all of a sudden now I'm actually being considered for these internships and finally got an opportunity um, which took me in January down to Orlando to work for Universal Creative. So like what you're saying is really, really true. It's not necessarily that you that your artwork is not good enough or that your knowledge isn't valuable enough. It's you're not in proximity to the job. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's such a competitive industry that if you have all things being equal, you have a candidate here who has a great portfolio. You have a candidate here who has a great portfolio. But they're in, in far awaysville. Do you want to eliminate every single competitive event, like every single thing that they can say against you? You need to eliminate that completely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we do have some questions, I would, and this one's for you guys. Uh, I think, it, Kelly, were you a, a TA student member? Is it worth it? I was, and still am, actually. Um, I SCAD has the oldest TEA student um, organization. And um, it's a fantastic organization. They're very, very active. Um, I, I can't really say, you know, anything bad. It's just, it's a fantastic way to get into uh, the industry and kind of know other people like-minded um, who a lot of them have amazing amount of experience in the industry. And a lot of them are new and, and novices to it, just like you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and even I joined. I didn't get into the theme entertainment industry until a couple of years after I graduated. But you can become a TEA Next Gen member up to three years after graduation. So I was on the tail end of it when I decided to move down here and join up. And it's you know obviously a lot better cost to do that. But I did so just so that I could you know make sure that I had the full access to the TEA because it is not we like we cannot emphasize enough how important it is to go to TEA events and network with people because from all the people I've talked to over the last year and having an interest in how people get jobs in the industry, I've found that, you know, it's a very, very high percentage of people get jobs because of their connections. Um, I mean, only a couple, only a handful I've ever heard that weren't internships that got jobs from just applying online, uh, knowing, knowing nobody at the company. Um, yeah. I mean, I met both of you through the TEA. <laughs> yeah. And, and one thing, you know, one thing about having connections and all that is that it's not so nefarious. It's that if you're, you know, somebody and you vouch for them and they're a nice person, people want to work with nice people. This is a very friendly Absolutely. industry. So yeah. they're not wanting to just, if they pull somebody off of a job board and there's no name to it, yeah. first of all, like, it's just challenging. You're going to go for the person that you know exists out there in the industry who's yeah. posting LinkedIn, who you meet at these events, who's passionate about it. And, um, you'll get picked up pretty quick. We have a question here. I want to go ahead and make sure we get all these questions in. If you work in a sub area of themed entertainment, horticultural instead of landscape architecture, how do you find opportunities or align yourself into a professional role in times of turmoil? Oof. I think I'm going to tell you. Um, I'm to do that right now. <laughs> yeah. You're doing that right now, which is means you might not be able to, and that's yeah. completely okay. Um, you may face where you might have to go and be an Amazon so, you know, Amazon manager or whatever the case may be, that's, yep. that's totally fine. hundred percent. Don't beat yourself up over it. You're going to, you know how to look for jobs. Like mm -hmm. you know, if you're in that specialized of a specific place, mm -hmm. somebody might be out there hiring a landscape architect that might not be in theme park design yet, but having two years of landscape architecture experience um, on your resume and then going uh, to go try get a job in Orlando when things maybe have picked up, they're going to be looking for that. That's going to be totally fine. That's a very specific, I don't want to speak for that specific subset because I don't know it very well, but that's as much as I can tell you today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know, uh, like have it like, oh gosh, I don't even know where I was going. Nah. 
<laughs> well, you know, we can keep rolling through questions, um, folks. Yeah. As a reminder, you know, we we have we have about twenty three minutes left. Uh, we have like sixty eight people watching, so that's really cool. Uh, thirty three on on Facebook and thirty six on YouTube. Really appreciate you guys chiming in. Um, it sounds like we probably need to do something like this again because this is quite an overwhelming response. Uh, might be a bit too specific. I have the opportunity to push off my graduation from August to December, and I'm currently stuck considering doing that during the current economy. What do you recommend? Um, what would you be doing if you if you pushed it off? Uh, Kelly, you look like you're about to say something, so feel free to chime in. It's such a hard it's such a hard position because I have classmates who are who've chosen to do the same thing. Um, and I think it's really up to your individual circumstance because if you have a place that you're currently living, a place where you're working while you're in school and you can push off graduation, that might be right for you. But I know a lot of people like, you know, their, their time has run out. Like I, I can't push graduation again. Like it's just, you know, I'm supposed to graduate in May. That was right for me, but what's right mm -hmm. for, for Casey might be something completely different. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to be the one, I don't know if either of you want to be the one to be like, Oh, sure. Go ahead and push graduation. Cause you know, who knows? Well, what I think, I think looking at it from a, a, you know, just a general perspective, right. I know, I mean, I know Casey is here in town, right. But if you're, if you're, if you have the opportunity to push your graduation, I think it really comes down to what's going to be the most uh, effective for you, right? Like if you're in a place where you do have that income, you are stable, and you have the ability to then work on projects that you can, you know, share and and you know build your portfolio that way, and that's the best community for you to do it. Then great, but you know, if you have the ability to graduate and move to Orlando or LA and start building those connections, um, then then that's also a really you know a really viable option. If you're you know Casey and you have both and you're already in town because you go to UCF or wherever um, and you can keep building those connections, but you're also still in that community where you have, you know, the, the extra resources that colleges give you to, to do projects and, and people who are willing to have, you know, have time and willing to do projects with you, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's, a, you know, it's really up to you. And let's just say, so specifically, so they're thinking about graduating between now and August. Between now and August, the only thing you're able to do is work from home and go to school. So now that that's a very specific question. So it's not that specific. It's just this 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 time, that's what I would recommend. Now, if you would have said under normal circumstances, the economy is not doing too well and, and maybe sure. you have an opportunity, but I can do the Disney College program for a semester. Maybe I would recommend that. Um, mm -hmm. But you can't do that right now because the parks aren't open. So going to school is the most productive thing that you can do. I'd say get it out of the way and, and you just got to face the world after that. I mean, is, I mean there is, there is the, the other point of a lot of those internships that are people's foot in the door at Disney. Like it, the only way to work at Disney full time, really in Imagineering or, you know, it, you know, not at the parks is you get an internship now or you go somewhere else and get, you know, develop the skills for a couple of years and then apply. Um, so if that's really what you absolutely have to do, then, I mean, maybe pushing it, you know, a few months, your graduation, so that you are within that six month window, because Disney and Universal have a window of if you are this far past graduation, you cannot apply for these roles anymore, um, the internships. So one really important point, um, at the moment, we are, we, we, we say Universal, we use uh, Disney, because we know everybody knows what those companies are, which is great. but. These companies, uh, Disney and Universal, all use so many different fabrication vendors, artistic vendors, um, architecture vendors, and those are the jobs that are out there. That are these are the ones that are being hit really hard right now. That are that, but they all exist. And um, so th this is why when you join the TEA, you start having exposure to all these different companies. Right now, you can go to teaconnect.com, and you can find uh, you can find a whole member directory of wherever you're, whatever state you're in all the TEA members. And those are the people you need to start mm -hmm. hitting up. And one of those companies is a uh, will builder. And that's Michael Libby um, who commented, who's saying, I'm looking for unity developers if there are any listening. Um, so reach out to Michael Libby. I'm, I know he's, he's on Facebook, but you can, I'm sure you can find him on LinkedIn. If you mm -hmm. are a developer, please do that. 
Um, go um, ahead and uh, any, anything to add or else I keep going with some questions. Yeah, I was just going to say the, the TEA member directory is a great place to find the, um, the, the companies all over the country. So if, you know, whether, whatever state you're in, um, but just a small plug right here. Uh, I run the site themed entertainment right. and it, the, we have two, we have two pages right now. One is Orlando, one is LA. And we have compiled a list of all of the companies with direct links to their career site. And then also list all of their open positions currently on their, on those sites. Um, and we update that pretty frequently. So um, it's definitely a good resource if you're looking to get into the entertainment and try to get to, into those hubs, but definitely a good idea uh, to look more locally uh, if you're not in those hubs already. So I have a, I, we talked about connections earlier and I had a, somebody text me this, which I thought was pretty good, which was who, you know, gets you there, what, you know, keeps you there. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Brian Kane. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> All right, Carolyn. Hi, thanks for watching. What would you recommend to someone who's out of school and has some industry experience under their belt and needs an income in between industry jobs? Whatever job you can find right now. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna tell you about my experience. So uh, I moved to Orlando and I kind of I kind of went pretty quickly through uh, what I how to get where I, got, where I was doing. Um, no job, nothing. I had a, st a storage unit that I emptied out into a, a store or a U-Haul and pulled my car across country and just happened to uh, my friend, uh, Wyatt, he had a, uh, a, a, an apartment complex across from his that was being built. And I said, okay, I'll go there. Got the first month's free rent, which was great. And this was after I had started the company. It was like the, uh, was, was a big, like kind of managing that with my friend, Brian. And I, just completely swallowed every sort of pride I had. I had the best attitude about it and said, all right, I started at Splitsville in downtown Disney and said, I'm going to try to be a server or something. And they said, thank you. You know, we have, and they look at my application, like, what do you, what is this? And I'm like, yeah, I want a job. Like, okay. I kept walking and a few other stores were just like not really hiring. And so I went to T-Rex um, and they did an interview right there on the spot. And I got a job at T-Rex as a host. Um, and because that was just the first job that I could that I could get that to hire me, um, and there is a happier ending to this, but they delayed my my start date. But at this TEA event I had gone to, I, I met um, Jovan Harkless, and she told me that I should get involved with um, with Give Kids the World. Never heard of it in my entire life. Um, but when I when I kind of came into Orlando, I just said I want to. I kind of got like a whole you know, a life paradigm shift where I'm like, I want to get involved with volunteering and that's what I want to do. So she said, you need to get involved with Give Kids the World. So I showed up and I just did every shift, I, all the shifts I could while I was still trying to get a job. So I was doing 40 hours a week volunteering there and I settled into um, a, uh, like a pretty good role at their guest services counter, which I love. Just like, it's a great place, I was volunteering there several days a week. I would go into there in the morning and was just overjoyed with joy for my experience there. And then I'd go to T-Rex that night and just be completely emotionally destroyed because it was the worst. It was the worst place you could ever work as a host. It was just the worst. And I've, I've been yelled at, screamed at at Disneyland. I was a supervisor at Disneyland. I was, yeah, it was, the, I was just sitting there just trying to keep a straight face. Luckily, only worked there for two weeks because I got a job at Give Kids the World. <laughs> so that was good. It was a happy ending, but it was miserable. Um, so to answer your question, I just took any job I could. And you know what? That's going to be facing a lot of you guys. And there's nothing wrong with that. How did I stay positive? I, had, I was sitting there at um, T-Rex and everyone's like, Patrick, why are you so happy? This actually happened. Why are you so happy? We're all miserable. This is the worst. This is the terrible. And I said, because there's no world that exists where I'm not going to get where I want to go. I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I'm going to, it's going to happen. And uh, just today I, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I want um, because of perseverance and all these, all this hard work I've done over the years. That's what you have to get ingrained into your soul. So while you're working your job that you might not like, um, that maybe hopefully is somewhat related to the industry. Maybe it's not. In your head, you got to keep the positive inflow of no matter what, it's going to happen. It's going to happen eventually. It's not going to happen today. May not happen next year. May not happen the year after that. But it is. So now I'm seven years out, married, have an amazing job, love what I'm doing. I'm living the, now. That, I, mean, I mean, I'm stuck in this place, uh, my house. But it is. It's going to happen to you if you stay to it. Um, so don't be. Just take any job at all. 
Are you- uh, well, and, and at this point, it's like, you know, you can take any job, you can take any job at all, uh, but nowhere else hiring. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, in, and the only places that are hiring are like a health risk. So be very careful. I know like you know, Publix and Costco and all those kind of places are hiring if you need, an, you know, an income. But um, yeah, but be very careful. I wouldn't recommend you know, putting yourself out there like that. So we're going to do the lightning round because we have a ton of questions here. Um, and I want to just try to get through some of these. Um, all right. Lightning round. This is something specific to my situation. How would you build up your resume if a job in the industry is not possible for a couple of years? So we've talked about this. You may have like jammed a little bit later, but try to get a job in theme parks, working as mm-hmm. an operations host, or we're just getting a job in a hotel or something that's similar. Um, yeah. Volunteer, depending on where you live, um, volunteer with an organization, keep doing your art, uh, work with other fellow students on projects, um, yeah. and go, go to a uh, go to a uh, an organization and say, how can what requirements do you have and how can I help? Um, yep. That's what I would personal, do. Personal projects are one of the biggest reasons. Like if you if they see that you are doing something in your free time that is cool that applies to what they do, that's one hundred and fifty percent going to get you a job. The first the first thing like in my interview with my Jen, um, she said, I know exactly what give kids the world is, and that's amazing. We all love that. Yep. That's, everyone yep. loves that. And and I'm not I'm not I'm not I didn't do it for those reasons. It's just being good. Pays off. That's the that's the way the world works. Um, where do you submit your questions right here. Uh, that's what you want to just go ahead and comment on you on Facebook. Um, and we're gonna have to get. Well, there's a lot of questions, so we'll do our best here. Okay. Um, we already did that one. Would you recommend a themed inter- or engineer? Okay, I'm trying to get. Here's exactly what you need to do. You need to go on LinkedIn right now and find people that have this job title that you want. So if that's going to be uh, uh, if that's going to be right engineers, if that's going to be creative director, art director, whatever job you want, be resourceful yeah. Go on LinkedIn and search for the people that are where you want to be in 10 years. And it's going to, it's going to help you develop a path. Uh, Dave, you look like you want to chime in on this. Yeah. Specifically coming from that mechanical, from a mechanical engineering world and talking to a lot of the people who are in the industry who do right engineering kind of stuff. I know specifically they are looking for um you to be proficient in mechanical engineering and you know if a master's is is helpful for sure um but like if reach out to the people like at roush dynamic Ener- you know dynamic attractions oceaneering those kind of people um because they will let you know um exactly what they look for when they're hiring that kind of position yep yeah robert anderson i've heard from older engineers in the industry that they got a job from a virtual interview or on a whim without actually being in orlando do you think that's changing with the newer generations i do um, yeah. so in, it, it's all, it's a supply and demand engineers is so specialized and, um, and, and, and so, uh, maybe you could, there's, there's, there's places out there that might be hiring you. I have, I have a friend who was in a related field, um, and he got pulled into universal four or five years ago, but that's before SCAD had, that's before SCAD had these programs. That's before the next gen. So there's all these people that are already, um, having a leg up. Um, that have you so the answer is maybe it's possible but don't do it to yourself if you're if, yeah <laughs> and, and, and i would also say that a lot of the um a lot of the ride manufacturers aren't in orlando there are a lot of ride manufacturers who who have offices in orlando but that's mostly their maintenance and installation team a lot of the like big ride manufacturers are like like Dynamic Attractions and Roush have headquarters like in Canada and Michigan and, and all over the place. So um, if you're really interested in doing ride specific stuff, there's a lot less you can do with, like in Imagineering than if than if you're working on ride vehicles, you're going to be working, you know, remotely other places. So definitely look into the companies that do specific ride kind of stuff and and approach them. Um, it's, it's a whole nother route. So uh, next up we have, uh, thanks for the tip. Are there any other ben- are there other types of benefits for being outside of Orlando and LA. So if you are able to go to a city that specifically has um, a company that does it, like JRA is in St. Louis, their talent pool is small, but you need to, you need to go to where there's a company that is. I, I, I mean, it might be cheaper. That's a benefit. Um, but, but it's, it, there's not, there's not many. That's, that's a tough one. Um, if you are, let's just say you maybe can't take that leap quite yet, for, or you're in school, um, a friend of mine who's working at Universal right now on a, on a you know undisclosed project, uh, he was a he was a mechanic at Six Flags, um, one of the Six Flags out there, and whether it's the, it's all the same hardware, you're it's it's all generally the same principles that you might learn at a Six Flags as a mechanic, 
you can bring that information to it. So if, if there's mm-hmm. something nearby that's somewhat um, you know palatable to this, that's great. Um, for example, you can be a big fish in a small pond. So if you go, I, there's a, a great art director who now works for he's he does Halloween Horror Night stuff. He got to start doing um, uh, North Carolina uh, carowinds. Uh, he was this, like the stuntman for the show, um, and then he was the scenic designer. So he had this whole world where he was the most artistic guy, built that pal- resume up, and then he did eventually move to Orlando. So you can build up experience in places like that. Um, so there is there is some benefits to that. All right. I talked myself out of it. Um, oh, we've got a <laughs> lot of questions here. Lots of questions. Let's see what we got here. So we got a comment. Um, you guys want to read that comment while I search for other things? Go ahead, Kelly. I, my screen's so small. <laughs> I joined Next Gen when I was in school in Chicago, and it gave me the opportunity to volunteer at TEA State, yay, in Orlando. And that changed everything for me. Would highly recommend. So that's uh, that's awesome, Shannon. Congratulations. I know a lot of other people with Next Gen have like really kind of sunk their teeth in and, and made a go at this. So can't recommend TEA Next Gen enough. Like it's just such a good way to be in this industry as a as a new person coming in uh so we have some a question my interest in themed entertainment is new but it sounds really awesome i'm in college cool. learning computer science art and game development how do you guys recommend my expo- you have tons of options um that is a huge that's where we're going in this industry um mm-hmm. michael libby who commented earlier uh find him on linkedin and bug him uh because he's created i don't want to get i don't want to i don't know what's proprietary that i know that he's doing but um Lots of things are running off game engines right now. So you look at a uh, 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 Smuggler's Run, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. It's completely ran off a game system. So th- that is the up and coming new latest greatest thing that is a huge competitive advantage for you. Having that blending that is huge for you. So that's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and see. Okay, this is a long one. <laughs> Who wants to read that? Yeah. Read you're it. right up close. Oh, you're gonna read it. Hey everyone. Hey Michael. I know you. Um, I'm in my last few weeks of my undergraduate career in mechanical engineering, and I've applied to several jobs and internships in the industry, but almost all have been put on indefinite hold. Oh, understand, completely understand. Uh, I know you mentioned about getting into operations or even traveling, but is graduate school an option? Oh, yeah. Graduate school is always an option. <laughs> I mean, obviously, financially, it's up to you whether graduate school is an option, but. Um, yeah. <laughs> And, and I think I think it does also depend on what you want to do in the industry. So some of the roles that are very mechanically focused, like doing ride systems, working on that kind of stuff, they do look for, um, you know, higher level degrees. Um, the, I mean, the more knowledge you have in those areas, the better. Um, I would say if you wanted to get into that kind of stuff, try to apply the industry you know, industry projects, you know, projects related to your industry into your classes so that you have something that like if you have project classes to pick projects that, you know, you can show off to industry people and say, hey, look what I did. Um, That's that's a big thing. Um, But I would say if you're looking to get more into like a project management role or something that's, you know, less technical, um, then I wouldn't go into it. I wouldn't do it. Um, I wouldn't do the the master's program. So if if um, it depends on when you have asked me, if you had asked me not in this economy, I would have said, go into the real world and try to figure it out. Cause you just did yeah. 20 years of school. Um, at my last, uh, basically one of my last days of college, my professor said, how many are you going to grad school right now? And, and they raised their hands and they said, well, okay. They raised their hands and they said, okay, how many of you are going into school for business? Cause I was in the business program and basically 95% uh, raise their hands and they said that's the dumbest thing you could have done you're gonna pay uh you know three times as much for the same exact uh, content except the textbooks are going to be a little bigger and a lot more expensive that was a bad choice and and everyone got to laugh at it and that's not good having said that if you're able to go into a graduate program with a different degree and you literally have no other op- options that's yeah. something. So if you were going into school for engineering, like you said, you were you were mechanical engineering, and then maybe you want to go and do a completely different degree and uh, for themed entertainment, that would be smart. Super expensive. So yeah. uh, that is the biggest thing that you have to go ahead, Kelly. UCF's program. Um, if you are in the state of Florida, UCF's program is in state tuition. So there you go. And I know, uh, Michael. So I'm just throwing that out there. 
Yeah, yeah I but know. I would just I just reiterate the fact that if you are going into graduate school just because of the way the job climate is now, and there you don't have very many other options, don't go more into debt. Just don't go back to school just because you don't have any other options. Um, do it for a good, you know, because the end goal is what you want to do. Because right. um, I think a lot of people in 2008 did that. They went to grad school just because there weren't and there weren't any other options, and now they're you know even more in debt and struggling to gather it. So. So uh, we have a couple, I, mean, I want to do like two more rapid fire questions and I think we've uh, answered a lot of them. Um, and then it sounds like we probably need to do this again as a group therapy session for all the students out there and we're happy to help keep this platform going. Uh, I yeah. completed three entertainment internships and I'm highly involved with the TEA at UCSD, okay, San Diego and TEA yeah. committee. Uh, but I've struggled with getting themed entertainment internships. What should I do? Well, you had three entertainment. So you had it, but now I'm confused. She, maybe her, oh, that's. Or is it getting jobs? Let's just say you're having trouble getting jobs. You gotta keep at it. Keep doing exactly what you're doing. You're doing the right thing. You have the, it's just a waiting game. Um, yep. and then you joined a little bit later, but my, my main message was that it's about the long game, which is the people that you're meeting with now, Kelly, Dave, and I, we're gonna be rising up in this industry together and knowing each other for decades. Decades, <laughs> decades. Um, and then I want to give a big shout out. Uh, we didn't get to all the questions, but I do have to. I have to go off to a really fun meeting. Um, give kids the world was lucky to have you and your continued support. Well, that's so nice, Joey. Um, Joey started. He wanted, to, he wanted to read that as a compliment for himself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna sign off. We're, we're, gonna sign, we're gonna sign off here. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we hope it was useful. We are going to record yeah. this. We already recorded this. We'll snip it out um, all up there on the internet. Um, uh, I we just kind of like I don't know this. This was thrown together with LinkedIn. Like you said something on LinkedIn, and I said, "Hey, why don't we go on there and talk about it, Kelly?" And uh, I'm actually and I, was just, I'm, I was in the right place at the right time. Yeah, Dave but, happened to be on a phone call yeah. the prior, and then Kelly got on before uh, in it, and I was like, "Hey, why don't we all just do this together?" And then it's been pretty good ever since. So. Yeah. yeah. But uh, like you said, if you guys have more of those questions or didn't have your question answered, reach out to any of us on LinkedIn. We will reply and, and do the best we can. Um, I'm all, I have a lot of time on my hands, so I'd love to you know help you guys out uh, any way you can. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. And uh, we will see you later. Keep it up, guys. It's going to happen. Keep up the positivity. Thank you for joining us. Definitely. Have a good one.